gentlemen, we are about to start a build video on this fella. Now this is going to be a painting video, more than a video on the Mustang, but this is the Mustang I'm going to be building. There's the tail. This is the vertical tail, because this is going to be uh, a three-channel airplane. We're going to have a tail that I'm not really using. We're going to have these guys are going to be the ailerons and the elevator, and that's going to be it. So there's going to be two servos, and it'll only be a couple of channels, but that's one possibility. Or I could uh, put a control surface on this, and I haven't decided yet. So we also have our VG package. So I'm going to put all the pieces in here. This is going to be the pieces that I need. And I am going to get ready. Now, I'm going to give each of these pieces a layer of black. So, let's get that together. First, every single piece gets coated evenly in black. But, you're going to notice when I do this, guys, it's an incredibly thin, thin, thin layer that I am aiming for. Very, very thin. And I'm going to show you why in a minute, but it might not be for the reason that you think. See, we're going to do this as a multicolor paint job, like you've seen the others, only this one's going to be a little bit different than the other paint jobs you've seen me do, and a little bit more complex. So just bear with me, and I'll show you what I mean. So I really want a nice thin layer of this on here. Now, I've tried to show you guys... The difference between working with a brush and working with a sponge and you can see how much harder it is to get a nice even coating with a brush and with enough practice you can get pretty good at it but I'm actually not going to be doing a thick coating of black. That's as much as I want. And I'm going to set it down on the edge of this. I've actually taken this piece. Just let me put that over there. I'm going to take all of my individual pieces, guys. I'm going to coat them very thinly in the black. As best I can. Now this is actually the bottom layer of the paint job that I'm going to be doing. So it does not have to be perfect. In fact, if it's not, no one is going to know it. So I'm just going to take each of these in turn, pick them up, give them a quick once over. Don't worry about getting your hands dirty on this one. I certainly am not. I'm just going to paint the end of it, give it a quick once over. And then once I've done that, I'm just going to set it down and let it kind of dry. Pick up the next one. And now in there, I've got one more to do, plus the wing. Now, once that's all finished, I need to thoroughly let it dry, which is why there is a little doobie in the background here. Uh, yes, that is a doobie, and it's kind of going to be the celebration after this is done. If this paint job works out half as nice as I think it's going to, this is going to work. Now, I have done a lot of painting in my lifetime, guys. I know it doesn't always look it. I'm not the best painter, but I'm not the worst either, and I can produce decent quality paint jobs, and you'll see some of those here. So what I will say to you is that right now, I'm basically just taking... A quick job here uh, at getting all these done as quickly as I can. And what I'm going to do is, I don't want to kind of keep you in suspense, but I'm not sure I want to just give it away yet either. I want to see if it's going to work. Not so much. I already know this is going to work, and it's going to be nice looking. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. In the, the background here, you may be able to see that I have three colors out. I have black. I have a nice metallic silver, and then I have a nice metallic blue. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to layer these three colors in precisely that order. The darkest color is going on the bottom. The silver is going in the middle, strangely enough, you might think. 
and then the blue is going to go on top. Now, I have done layered paint jobs like this before, and if the layers are done right, they look beautiful, guys. Really nice. So, I'm going to share with you how I go about that, and it's really as easy as it sounds. I'm just going to make three layers, each as thin as I possibly can, except for the final layer, where I'm going to use two layers of blue. Now, if I just put black underneath, it makes the blue a lot darker. If I put black and then I put the silver, it lightens up the black but darkens the silver. And underneath the blue, that silver will show a little bit if we do a nice thin layer. If we do a thicker layer, it'll just kind of darken it up a little bit or lighten it up a little bit, depending on whether we go with the black or the silver underneath. And so what I'm doing is starting with a fairly dark metallic black. And you'll see the effect here when I'm finished, but it actually looks really good when it's done. It'll take a little while, and I'll probably have to do this video in three stages, but stay tuned if you're going to be painting your RC, you guys, because I will show you how to make a good paint job fairly quickly. Even though you're using cheap paints, doesn't mean it has to look like crap, guys. What you really need to do is just do a nice, clean job. Nice, even paint distribution. Get the edges. You don't want to leave any areas uncovered, because they won't look correct when it's done. They'll be different all over. And I really don't want that. I want every single edge nice and neatly covered, guys. Like that. And now I'm going to flip it this way. And make sure that I've got all my little areas that I've been touching. And there we go. Alright, so now I have all my pieces laid up here. I'm going to go back to the very first piece I did while it's still wet because the black we actually want a pretty good layer on it we're gonna hit it again and we're gonna hit our sides but in the interest of saving weight I'm just gonna hit it lightly and make sure that I've got all my sides there's no white sections there's no nothing like that it's all nice and neat I'm gonna go inside here too and make sure I've got all that then I'm going to flip it over. I'm not even going to really add paint to my brush much. Maybe a touch here because I ran out. But other than that, I'm just going to give it a quick once over here. And away we go. I'm not going to bother to do that with my VGs because they actually look pretty well counted. And I'm going to need to leave the rest of this for a minute or two. Um, so what I will say to you is now is a good time to take the opportunity to clean up. Um... I would generally suggest that you keep a fan going and it'll make things a little smoother. So you might wonder why I'm not just mixing these colors. If I do that, I could mix you a batch and you would see right away that I'm going to get a very different color by mixing it than I will doing what I'm doing. And that is the reason I'm not doing it is because I don't want to get a mixed color out of this. I want the blue on top to pretty much be the way that it's been uh, in the can. I want it to have that color. I just want to make it a tiny bit darker. And yes, technically I could add black to that to achieve that effect. But you know what? It is not the best way to go. And it gets inconsistent. And that leads me to reasons why it's not the best. And it's because you have to make each batch individually. And if you don't make enough to do your whole plane you screwed yourself over and now you don't have enough to do the plane and you have to make another batch guys and as soon as you have another batch you have the problem of consistency it gets very difficult to match your color perfectly so i don't actually recommend you do it that way i recommend this way do it the single color at a time method and you'll find it works really nicely in the long run you get a pretty job that's easier to do the real trick is to make sure your layering is nice, okay? And I've done that now. It looks good. I'm not seeing any chunky sp spots. It looks real good. So I'm going to leave it like that. I'm going to hit my tail again. 
it's the final piece, but you can see how much better coverage you get on that second coat, guys, and that's what you want. But if it was going to be a finished coat, I would go for a third. It's not. This is not our finished coat, guys, so it doesn't really matter if it's perfect at this moment. All that matters is that we get a good base coat on. Now that that's finished, I'm going to put this paint aside. I'm going to put the brush aside. I'm going to let all that dry. Then I'm going to come back at it with a totally different color, guys. And we're going to come at it with the silver. And I'm going to thoroughly coat it in the silver. And once that's finished and that's dried, I'm going to come back at it yet again with a whole another kind of color, of course. Because I just noticed a bit of white on the edge here. So I just want to clean that up. Just take a good look at your edges and make sure they're all nice or you'll regret it later. You Partly because you want a nice even amount of paint on each one. If there's layers of paint, you'll find that you've shown those layers out in the final finish. Every layer of paint will actually show. So I'm going to go wash up. I'll be right back. So, by painting the whole thing black, all I'm really doing is guaranteeing that I will have a nice dark base. So, now we're going to take our next color. Now, here's the trick. I could take a little bit of each of these and mix them, and I'm going to do that just so you can have a template and see what the difference is in color, and it'll give us something to do while we wait for the rest of that to dry. So, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to take a little bit of our black. It's the same black, guys. There's no flim flam here. I'm going to take just a dollop, tiniest little dollop. We just need enough to show you guys what this will be like without wasting the paint. So now we're going to take equal parts, just for good measure, because we're putting one good solid coat on each of each. It's not exactly that. We're actually putting a couple coats on of a couple of different colors. But in the end, brand new color here. Yucky. So I'm going to pull this off. Good old tweezers are handy for these sorts of jobs. Put that aside. I'm actually going to drop that into a little glass of water I have just so I don't put it anywhere else. And look at this gorgeous color, guys. This is a beautiful color. Look at the darkness of it. This is a beautiful color, guys. I couldn't help it. When I saw that, I had to buy it. So now we're going to mix it. And this is where we come up with a problem. I had three nice colors there. What we come out with is crap. Now, this isn't a bad color, but this isn't the color that I wanted. Does this look like a metallic blue? Or does this look like a metallic gray? Now I'm not saying it's not a cool color. I'm not saying that. I just made a sick color, okay? But I'm just gonna give myself some room here and do the same kind of thing where I've given myself a nice coating so you can see a nice color here. Okay guys? So there's that. Give it a nice coating. I don't want anybody thinking I did a half ass job. And look at this. This is a really pretty color. It's got nice metallic tones to it. It's pretty. I, I actually like this. I might just make myself some more of this. Because it came out such a nice dark color. But compare it to the black. They're not that different. Now, let me just take as a color sample. Does this look like that? 
I want this to be a little darker. You know how hard it is to get this color and still have it be dark without it being that. That's the challenge. So I'm going to go rinse this off. We'll be right back. And it looks like these are getting just about dry enough where I could just go ahead and take the next coat. But they're not quite yet. So we're going to show you a couple other things. We're going to talk about a couple other things real quick while I get this going. And uh, I'll be right back. Now, the reason I've done this is so that later I can compare the color that we're going to get versus the color we got. So you can see why I'm not mixing the colors. Now, I could make myself a very cool metallic blue mixed with a little bit of the gray and a little bit of the black. It would give it a really nice set of colors because that's not gray. That's metallic silver. And it does look really good, guys. I, I can't argue with that. So, we're getting close here. I just, you just want to look at it. And if it looks wet on the surface, guys, we're not done yet. When I pick it up, though, I'm not getting black on my hands. That's a good sign going to take a look at this now watch if I just sit here and blow on it it'll go a little faster but honestly I find that's really just a waste of your breath what you're better off to do if you really are in a rush is put it under a very light fan the problem is they're little foam pieces you see any problem with a light fan uh, I do what are you going to do, weight them down? <laughs> a little tough to do while they're wet. Anyway, <coughs> this is where we come into the me smoking a joint and mixing a color. Be patient. <coughs> now, I have some vials here. Um, various glass vials I use for, for various things. I, I don't do drugs or anything creepy like that with them. But I can show you what one of them has. Gold. Those are gold flakes in that suspension. Not a lot of them, but enough to make it interesting to keep it as like a snow globe. But I could get a couple of glass vials like that and make my own colors. Now here's something interesting. Look at the qualities of the color here. You see some metallic quality to this, which you don't have in the black, which is interesting. I mean, mixing colors can be really awesome. In fact, when I was in school, I, I did well in art because I was mixing my own colors all the time and creating my own colors. I do have a good eye for that sort of thing. I just wanted to show you what's going to happen if you're going to start mixing your colors. You are going to get some cool colors if you use good paints. They'll be really cool colors, but you have to be really careful doing it. And the reason is you're going to have to look at a bunch of things. One, consistency. What if I had to make this exact color again? You think I'll get the exact same amount of the exact colors just right? Probably not. <coughs> it's been my experience. If you're going to make custom colors, that can be great. What I recommend is you make a very small amount to see if you like it. Put that small amount aside. Don't use it. Put it aside. Put it on a sample piece like this and leave it. And then make a batch and check it against your batch. Don't use it all either when you do your little sample like I've done here. Don't use it all because what you really don't want is to use it all. So what you want is to use as little as you can just to get the job done, a nice thin coating. I'm still looking here. I'm not seeing things be quite finished yet. And the trick is patience, guys. You can still see it's wet here. It's not ready yet, okay? It's as simple as that. Now, you know, you can see a little streak here from the brush where it's showing through. That kind of stuff is okay and may even lend the final coat some character later. Now, because these guys only got one coat, they're basically ready to be painted now. Um, so, 
let me start to move things around so that I can get things ready. So the way I like to do this is to move everything over to the right to say, this ain't done yet. And then I move everything over to the left once it's finished. Like that. And then these guys can just be down in here. And they're pretty dry because they have been sitting the longest. But one of them, because it fell in upside down, is still wet. And the other one beside it, same thing, also still wet. you got to let the air get at them if you want them to dry properly. So a little bit of um, patience goes a long way here, guys. I really want to just start painting, but I can't hold my tongue, have some coffee, consider my color scheme. So let's do that. One of the reasons why I actually really want this color scheme to be the way I do is I want the overall dominant color to be metallic blue. But if I put the metallic blue on as a single color, it'll be this color. Okay, well, this is cool looking, but what if I want it just a little different? If I put the metallic silver underneath that, it'll get a little lighter. <coughs> but if I put the metallic black under the silver, the black makes the silver darker, which in turn makes this a little bit less light, but still lighter than it would have been. So if I've done this right, I will lighten this by a shade. It will come out just a hair lighter than this, which is actually a really cool color. This is gorgeous, and I think it's going to look great on my Mustang. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add extra in terms of striping and the tips in silver, and I think the whole thing is going to look really good. So we're going to find out. We're just about ready to go here. I've got some pieces that look like I could start, so I think I'm going to start. The problem is you really want to wait. These these wet areas, man, you're better off taking away and wiping them off than you are just painting. And the reason is really simple. The mixing of the colors. Look at the color. Do I want this color? Heck no. And because I don't, I've got to be patient. I absolutely have no choice but to wait. And to wait until things are thoroughly, thoroughly dry, guys. This is still not dry. I still can't do anything. Now, I will say, if you have an open window, guys, you can put those in the open window if there's not a lot of wind. Now, unfortunately, where I live, sometimes the wind just whips up and we get really big bursts coming through that I don't want to use. Also, uh, some of these hamburger containers have these. They make excellent VGs, guys. Uh, these are what I'm using for VGs on this aircraft, in case you were curious. This will be my scoop intake. I'm planning out the body for this aircraft right now. I have a vague idea of what I want to do. Uh, this is a traditional Mustang, guys. It's very squared wingtip, both a little rounded and squared. They're just as close as I can get to a P-51, pretty much. <coughs> the tail... Again, very much a, a real P-51 tail uh, in every respect. This is very much a P-51 tail. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with copying it. Just because this is a design channel doesn't mean I don't appreciate the classics. In fact, it's the other way around. It means I appreciate them all that much more because I appreciate the quality of the design that goes into it. So, I'm going to pull over my silver. Now, you might say... Okay, Keith, you want your silver stripe and your silver tips. Why don't you just put the metallic blue on? And the reason is, it'll darken the metallic blue significantly from what you see there. I don't actually want that. I want the other thing. So pay close attention to the color that this silver is. I have other air uh, vehicles that are made out of this exact silver, guys. So I'm going to show it to you after just so you can see for yourself what the color differential is because it is pretty substantial. So I'm going to uh, put a pause on my doobie here. And I'm going to go back to work. Now, I do have a little tiny bit here, but it's going to be fine. This little bit won't matter. Now, for those of you who know this silver, 
you'll see this is actually coming out very pretty, a very nice dark silver. Okay, that's what I want. It's normally a little bit lighter than this as far as the silver itself goes. Okay. Now don't forget, this isn't even the final color. But I'm already liking it a heck of a lot better than this. Okay, so check this out. This is what I'm talking about. We're getting a totally different color. We're getting a silver that's darker as opposed to the crap that I was looking at a minute ago. So that one's done. I'm going to puff in a, another doobie. And I'm going to paint some more. So what I like to do is just kind of take my time, relax, paint it up. And the goal is not to mix the paints, guys, because that will end up giving me a totally different color. I don't. I want to wait until this is dry enough that I can put on top of it, not mix with it. So it's got to be really, really dry. I can't stress that enough, or it will totally ruin the look of your paint job. You could use the exact same paints, do exactly what I'm doing, but do it with the wrong timing, and you'll absolutely ruin your paint job, guys. And I'm sorry if you do. Don't say it's my fault if you do. All right, so we're almost done here. Just got to do up my edges, just like we talked about. Getting all the little bits. Now at the end, I'm kind of going to grab it by the edges here and give it a, a, a set down. And as I am, I'm just going to come around to those tips that I just touched and check them. And that looks fine. So now I'm going to do the VGs, same exact thing, guys. And the reason is I want the overall color of this aircraft to be consistent. And you'll see, with these three colors laid on top of each other, it'll be a subtle difference, but it will be there. And it'll be the kind of difference that I'll be glad to say I did, because it'll be sick. In fact, I can already see this silver looks significantly darker than the last aircraft that I painted in silver, which is significantly lighter. And that is the only reason. Is the fact that we've got the black underneath. And that, believe it or not, is a big deal. I mean, when you look at a, a color you like, it's generally comprised of more than one color, even if you didn't know it. Uh, and because of that, you really want to kind of take a serious look at any color and see if you can find out what its component colors are. There are certain colors you might want, like the color I just made there. If it really looks good to you, it's equal parts metallic silver, flat black, and metallic blue. And it does come out a pretty sweet color, doesn't it? Which is one of the reasons I thought I'd show it to you. It's not one of my, oh my god, I'm going to patent this for RXD kind of colors. Because it ain't that cool to my eye. But it is a pretty darn cool metallic color that you don't see anywhere else. So I thought I'd bring you that. And in the future, as I develop colors that you guys like, I will gladly share the formula with for each of those colors. So that you guys can have access to those as well. Now... We got our wings dry enough to paint, and this is what I like to see. I'm getting a nice smooth application of the coat without contaminating the paints, which is what I was hoping for. And it looks like I used just enough silver to get this job done. Okay, we're going to paint the whole thing here. Boop, 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 boop. Strangely, I'm painting the entire aircraft. Every crack, every crevice, every seam will be painted like this. Now, of course, I can take out some more if I have to, but one of the reasons I recommend you try and just use the exact amount you need every time one, it makes your paints go farther, but that's not why I recommend you do it. I recommend you do it for when you're making your own colors, because you'll get way better at figuring out 
how much of it you're going to need if you're used to trying to figure out how much paint you're going to need. It'll just be that much easier. So, here we go. Quick, 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 like a bunny. If I take more time, it's better quality, guys, but i kind of got a rush for you guys, so this is already a pretty long video. I wanted to wait so you'd see in real time how long it takes to do this, but something tells me my phone is going to cut out long before this is finished. It's probably going to be any minute. So I'm just going to do this really fast, then show it to you, then do it really fast. And in this case, I'm getting down to the nitty gritty. I'm almost done with this color, so I'm just going to put it on fairly quickly. Now, see, this is the thing. If you've got wet sections, this is going to blend on you. And it's not going to have the same final look. If you want the nice, bright, final look, you want nice, even coats of the right colors, guys. Those colors change at all. It'll change your final look. And if you happen to like what I'm going to do here, or if you like the way it comes out when it's finished, then you're going to want to replicate it. And if you replicate it, you're going to want to do it exactly the way I did, or you're really not going to replicate it at all. So... That's it for this one. Uh, I am going to just show you real quick already. This is looking a much darker silver, guys, than this. These two silvers are both the same. And now you look here and you can see how much darker that looks. And I'm, I'm going to show them to you in contrast later, but there's a good shot right there because it shows them in real contrast. One is a very, very light metallic silver. The other one is a very dark metallic silver, and when I'm done, we're going to have a slightly darker than what's there metallic blue that'll be sick. Keith out.